do we mean by that? Kung baga pa, uh, kung baga sa isang bagay, we are expecting, we are ex- we expected na ganun lang yung magagawa niya, pero meron pa pala siyang ibang kayang gawin, okay? Like, um, sa characteristics ng isang tao, um, when you saw a person, you thought na yung skills niya ganun lang, but, um, hindi pala, meron pa pala siyang ibang, um, characteristics na kaya niyang gawin, okay? So, yun yung ibig sabihin ng figurative language, okay? Yung something is like something else, Something na siya, pero may something else pa. Okay? again to my YouTube channel. Okay, so for today's video, we will have another discussion or another lesson in English. Okay, so I am hoping that you will finish this um, video for you to uh, really understand what is our topic for today, okay, or all about. Okay, so our topic is English, quarter one, module seven, Inferring meaning of figurative language using context clues, affixes, and roots, and other strategies. Okay, that will be our topic for okay. Okay, so um, for today's lesson, I am expecting or I am expected that the learners or the viewers will identify the difference between figurative language and literal language and infer meaning of figurative language using context clues, affixes, roots, and other strategies. Okay? So now, what do we mean by inferring meaning of figurative language? Why do we have to study that? Why we are tackled? Why, why, why we tackle about it? Okay, so according here, we often convey meaning by suggesting that something is like something else. What do we mean by that? Kumbaga, pa, uh, kumbaga sa isang bagay, we are expecting, we are, we expected na ganun lang yung magagawa niya, pero meron pa pala siyang ibang kayang gawin, okay? Like, um, sa characteristics ng isang tao, um, when you saw a person, you thought na yung skills niya ganun lang, but, um, hindi pala, meron pa pala siyang ibang, um, characteristics na kaya niyang gawin, okay? So, yun yung ibig sabihin nung figurative language, okay? Yung something is like something else. Something na siya, pero may something else pa. Okay? So, now, okay, I repeat, our topic is about um, inferring meaning of figurative language using context clues, affixes, and roots. Okay, so, the first one is context clues. So, context clues means are words that provide clues or hits, hints found within a sentence paragraph or passage that a reader can use to understand the meanings of a new and familiar word okay so from the word itself closed it gives hints okay hints means um just like idea okay uh, binibigyan kanya ng idea or clue what to was the passage sentence paragraph means or uh, kung ano yung gusto niyang iparating sa namang babasa okay yun yung ibig sabihin ng context clues it gives us clue it gives us hints or it gives us idea for the unfamiliar word the first example, okay, so we have here the example in context closed. Sabi, um, sabi niya, I am so hungry, I could eat a horse. The underlined phrase is a figurative language, okay? So, yung I am so hungry, I, uh, yung I could eat a horse, ano daw siya, figurative language. While the encircled phrase is a context clue. So, yung naka-circle, ano yun, context text clue. Okay? Yun yung, yun yun yung context clue natin. I am so hungry. Look at this one. Okay? I am so hungry is the context clue. 
Okay? I am so hungry. Could help you in figuring the meaning of the figurative language. Okay? So, yung I am so hungry, siya yung tumutulong sa'yo na mas maintindihan kung ano ba yung gustong ipabatid ng sentence. Okay? Na I am so hungry, it means gutom na gutom ako. Now, this one. The underline, okay? The underline um, um, sentence, I could eat a horse, means that the speaker is starving and can eat plenty of food since he is so hungry. So, did you see now what is context clue? Okay, so yung context clue, ito yung um, um, I am so hungry. So, tutulungan ka nitong context clue to understand ano nga ba yung ibig sabihin ng I could eat a horse. Kasi kung wala yung context clue, I could eat a horse lang yung uh, nandyan. Hindi mo alam po anong ibig sabihin nun. But because of the help of context clue, I am so hungry, nagkaroon ka ng idea na tao, dahil gutom na gutom siya, makakakain siya ng marami. It doesn't mean na sinabi niya, I could eat a horse. Hindi niya sinasabi na makakakain siya ng isang kabayo. Ang gusto lang, ang gusto lang niyang sabihin doon is makakakain siya ng marami dahil gutom na gutom siya. Okay, that is the context clues. Now, let's... Affixes means set of letters added to the beginning or end of a word to form a new word. Okay, don't forget about it. In affixes, ito yung mga uh, we are adding. Okay, we are adding letters to the word in the beginning or in the end to set or um, to form a new word. Okay, uh, look at this one. We have the two parts in affixes, okay? Letters plus word, okay? Set of letters added to the beginning of a word is called prefix, okay? So, tinatawag nating prefix yung mga nilalagay nating um, letters sa, uh, sa unang uh, word, okay? And then, dito naman, um, word plus letters, okay? Um, set of letters added to the end of a word is called suffix. Ito naman, at the end of the word, tinatawag yung suffix. Okay? Look at this one. Yung mga examples of prefixes natin is on, in, im, this, miss, re. Okay? In suffix, we have er, ness, os, full, less, able. Okay? But we will not focus on this because our topic is about inferring meanings of figurative language using con uh, context clues, affix, and um, roots. Okay? Ibang topic na to, but we will discuss this, that we will discuss the two part of affixes in our next video. Okay? So, look at this one. In affixes, okay? Affixes, affixes to ha? Affix. My sister walked through a muddy swamp after she heard that she failed her exam. This made her um, really unhappy. Okay? So, ito yung underline word. The underline word or the, the, uh, is a phrase. Walk through a muddy swamp is a figurative language. So, yung walk through a muddy swamp is a figurative language. While the un unhappy, meanwhile, the encircled syllable un is an affix, which means not okay. So, yung un, ano yan? Prefix yan, kasi sa una, sa una yung letter, okay? Sa una, nila nilagay yung letter, okay? So, ano yan? Um, uh, ano siya? Um, affix. Okay. My sister walked through a muddy swamp after she heard that she failed her exam. This made her really unhappy. So, yung ibig sabihin ng un means not. Okay? Yun yung ibig sabihin ng, pre, ano, ng affix. Okay? So, nagdadag, uh, we are adding letters or we are adding words to form a new words. Diba? Tignan mo yung happy. Isang word dyan. But because we add another letters or another word, uh, naging ano siya, na, uh, nag-form siya ng another word. Okay? Another meaning. Unhappy. Yung my sister walked through a medis, one pang ibig...
yung sister niya sa exam, okay, um, naging cause yun sa kanya para maging malungkot, okay? Um, d- ba diba, kapag malungkot yung isang tao, minsan naglalakad dyan parang ang tamlay-tamlay niya or parang ang bigat-bigat ng paa niya kasi iniisip niya nga yung failure. Yun na yung gustong sabihin ng example natin dito sa affix. Okay? The statement implies that the sister is not happy with what happened and had a hard time moving due to her feelings. Okay? Yun yung ibig sabihin nung example natin sa affix. Now, let's proceed to the roots. Okay? In roots, ito yung mga root word is a basic or original word which um, affixes are added to form new word and meaning. Okay, so sinasabi niya dito na from the word itself, roots, uh, word siya, okay? Parang root word kung saan nanggaling yung word na yon Yun yung ibig sabihin ng roots. Kasi dito yung nga yung original word siya, okay? And then dahil sa mga affixes na nilalagay natin sa word, nagkaka- uh, nagkakaroon ng new word and meaning, okay? So yung dun sa affixes, ha, ulit natin ha, sa affixes, we are adding, okay? We added um, we added word to form a new word, okay? Then, ngayon, sa roots naman, kung tatanggalin mo yung mga nilagay, tanggalin mo yung mga in mo, okay? in mo using affixes. And yung mga, and yung word na to, yun yung tinatawag na root na root word, okay? Ngayon, dun sa root word, kapag dinagdagan mo siya ng mga affixes, matatawag na natin siyang affixes kasi we we add new word to form a new word or meaning. Okay? So, we have here an example. I could sleep for a year after working the whole night tirelessly. Okay? Tirelessly. Okay? So, yung ano natin, um, yung sleep for a year, okay, ayan, is a figurative language. Which means, to have a long sleep. Okay? Pinag-aralan na natin ito sa mga figures of speech. Sa figures of speech, ano kaya, sa ang part kaya to yung I could sleep for a year. Very good. Sa hyperbole, exaggerated, or sa Tagalog, uh, common na sinasabi natin, OA yung statement. Makakatulog siya ng uh, isang libong taon. But um, in, uh, uh, in figurative meaning, ang ibig sabihin lang nun is um, dahil pagod siya, makakatulog siya ng mahaba. Okay? Nang matagal. Ganon. Next, tire. So, yung tire naman, eto yung root word natin. The encircled root word tire signals how tired the speaker is and how he really wanted to have a long and good quality of sleep. Because now, did you see now um, the difference of the affixes, affix and uh, roots? Yung roots, at yung root word, tire. But because of affixes, we added less, lead, less. Okay, tireless. Okay, we add less. So, nagkaroon, nag-form ng new word. But the root word niyan is tire. Means, signal siya na sinasabi na yung uh, tao, pagod na pagod siya. Okay? So, yun yung ibig sabihin ng um, context clues, affix, and yung root words. Okay? So, I hope you understand the difference of the three. Okay? Now, let's try this, kids. I will read this, uh, the instruction. Write FL on your answer sheet if the sentence uses figurative language and LL if it uses literal language. Okay, the first one. His friend is a black as coal. Ano ba siya? Uh, Uh, ano, uh, figurative language ba siya? Or literal language? His friend is as black as coal. So, dun sa mga fig... Oh, sorry. Parang nasabi ko na yung sagot. The answer is F. Figurative language. Kasi we use um, us to compare two things. ba diba in figures of speech, kapag gumamit tayo ng like or us, Uh, ginagamit na natin yung figures of speech of simile. 
Kasi sa simile, we are comparing two things um, using like or us. Dito naman sa sentence natin, um, sabi niya, his friend is as black as coal. So, yung friend daw niya, um, parang kasing itim siya ng um, coal. Apa yung parang, ang tawag doon yung uh, ano basta Tagalog yung coal, yung ano yun eh, parang kahoy siya na sinunog. Okay? I can ex- I, di ko na, nasa dulo na ng dila ako. Okay? But I know you understand what do we mean by coal. Hindi ko lang masabi yung Tagalog niya, but I know you get it. Okay? The next one. Can you dance like a monkey? Can you dance like a monkey? What is the answer? Very good. Figurative language pa rin siya. Kasi we compare a person to another things. Okay? Or to another person. So, uh, sa sentence natin, gumamit siya ng like. Okay? It's simile pa rin yun. Kasi we are using like or simile. Can you dance like a monkey? So, it means, ito is a figurative language. The third one. The light on the side is blending or blending, blending. Oh, the light on the side is blending. What is the answer? Very good. It's figurative language. Kasi yung the, the light on the side is blinding or blending daw. Okay? The fourth one. During winter, the weather is cold. So what is the answer? Very good. The answer is literal language. Kasi during the winter, the, we- the weather is cold. Tama nga naman. Every winter, yung weather cold. Okay, the fifth one. The family arrive at their destination on time. The family arrive at their destination on time. What is the answer? Very good. It's figurative language. The family arrive at their destination on time. So we have the homework assignment. There you go. I hope you can answer those. That's all for today. The meaning of the context clues, affixes, and the root word. So, I hope you learn for this video. And if you learn a lot, um, kindly um, like the video, share, and if di ka pa nakakapag-subscribe, don't forget to subscribe to my YouTube channel. So, see you to my next video, guys!